In addition to growing and remodeling bone, it's important that we have a mechanism to repair bone. Too much stress to the bone can cause a bone fracture, where a section of the matrix breaks. There are lots of different types of fractures depending on the exact type of break and the severity of the break, but we don't need to go into details about the names of all the different types of bone fractures. But whenever we have a bone fracture, the same steps of healing are going to occur. Whenever a bone is fractured, we have bleeding. Remember there are blood vessels running all through the central canals and there are blood vessels in the endosteum and the periosteum. So when we break a bone, we damage those blood vessels and bleeding results. The first step in healing is to form a blood clot. The blood clot that forms due to a bone fracture is called the fracture hematoma. This is important to stop blood loss in the area. Once the fracture hematoma is established, blood vessels and cells from the periosteum and the endosteum and the central canals will invade the fracture hematoma. This includes bringing in osteogenic cells, osteoblasts, osteoclasts, macrophages to help clean up debris, leukocytes to fight any infection if it happens to be an open fracture, fibroblasts, and chondrocytes. Lots of different cells are invading this fracture hematoma. The fastest cells to get to work are the fibroblasts releasing collagen and the chondrocytes that can build new cartilage matrix. The fibroblasts and chondrocytes work together to produce cartilage that's going to hold the ends of the broken bone together. This is called the soft callus. The soft callus can take several days to form, and it's not really strong. If you put weight on a soft callus, it can be easily torn, but it will help hold the bones together as long as you're staying still. With the soft callus in place, the osteoblasts can go to work converting the soft callus into a collar of bone around the damaged area. This collar of bone is called the hard callus, and it can definitely withstand much more weight but it does take several weeks to produce. It can take four or four to six weeks to form a hard callus, and that's the length of time that we usually like to keep a fracture in a cast to hold it still while that hard callus forms. Over the next several months, four to six months, osteoclasts and osteoblasts work together to remodel the bone, to smooth out the hard callus, to reform the uh, compact bone and the spongy bone, and to generally restore the bone back to its original or near original shape. This process really only works well when the fractured ends of the bones are lined up with each other so that we can form that soft callus and eventually the hard callus that will hold those bones in place. More severe fractures may require some intervention. We have to set fractures by making sure those damaged ends are lined up properly. And in some cases, this requires hardware to hold them in place. We have plates and screws and pins that are all designed to help hold the broken ends of bones in place, lined up properly, until we can get that callus form, the hard callus that can hold things in place and allow the bone to heal straight. Here's an example of a serious fracture to the radius and ulna. And in order to realign these bones, it was necessary to put in metal plates that were screwed in place while the bone healing took place. Like we can use skin grafts to heal very damaged areas of skin, bone grafts are also possible to help stimulate healing in areas of serious bone damage.